On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks bested the Anaheim Ducks 8-3 last night behind a career night from Patrick Kane. I'll be discussing Kaner's first career six-point game, plus Dylan Strom picking up another hat trick, and whether or not that could change the mindset of the Blackhawks front office on Strom as we approach the deadline. Then, I'll also get into the report that Norm McIver is expected to rejoin the Blackhawks front office as the associate general manager. And then to wrap things up, I'll get into the rumor that the Blackhawks have expressed interest in Minnesota Wild prospect Jack McBain. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome in to Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Wednesday, March 9th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And If you're listening to the audio version of this today and you like what you're hearing, then please go and show me some support first by following the podcast. It'll only take a quick couple of seconds. A quick click of the button will help me out tremendously. You can also go and rate the show with five stars if you like what you're hearing today. Go and leave me a review as well. And best of all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all absolutely for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of this episode, then definitely be sure to go and check out Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube. Each and every episode from here on out, folks, is going to have a video version attached to it as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please, please, please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Also, smash the like button uh, uh, Smash the like button on this video. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you go and turn on the notifications, then you'll be notified exactly when the episode is posted to YouTube each and every day. All right, good morning, everyone. And as always, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks and for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. Last night, the Chicago Blackhawks were back in action, taking on the Anaheim Ducks. And what a performance this was out of the Blackhawks offense, mostly from the top line of DeBrinket, Strom, and Kane carrying the way to an 8 to three victory and the Blackhawks actually have now won their last five meetings against the Ducks so for whatever reason they continue to have Anaheim's number and that just further continued on last night but the story of this game undoubtedly was the performance from 12 17 and 88 unbelievable and it was apparent right from their first shift they were feeling it I mean they were buzzing around the ice they were making some crisp passes they were finding the open spots to set each other up. It was, it was honestly just beautiful. And for Patrick Kane, of course, he picked up four points in those opening 20 minutes, a goal and three assists for number 88 in route to his career, his first career six point game. Kaner had picked up five points in a game a couple of times in the past, but he had never had six until last night against Anaheim. Uh, And if you didn't think Patrick Kane before last night, if you didn't think Patrick Kane was the greatest American player of all time, I have a feeling you may be thinking differently because what an impact he had on this game, not only by uh, scoring six points and also finding the back of the net for the seventh time in his last seven games, but also all five of his assists last night were primary assists. He was making the goals happen. He was making plays happen each and every shift. Just a spectacular performance out of number 88, one that he'll remember forever, one that a lot of us Blackhawks fans, I'm sure, will uh, remember forever as well. Just an incredible showing. And um, Kaner, with that six-point game, he now has 28 points 
in his last 16 games total. He's been absolutely on fire. I don't know if there's anyone hotter in the NHL right now than Showtime. Uh, he continues to get it done in a, a various in various ways. He's finding the back of the net more consistently. He's setting up his teammates. Just a beautiful performance last night from number 88 that will go down in the history books. And then for the other two on that line, I'll start with Alex Dabrinkit. He found the back of the net once again last night. He now has four goals in his last four games, a goal in each of those four games, I should say. Uh, he also went on to add three assists in this one as well, a four-point night out of Alex Dabrinkit to keep things rolling. Um, it, unfortunately, I found it kind of funny, even though he had four points, Debrinket didn't even wind up being one of the three stars of the game. So that's when you know it was kind of a offensive frenzy out of the Blackhawks last night. But I really wanted to talk about Dylan Strome, who, of course, netted a hat trick in that 8-3 to win. That's his second hat trick in the last few months. Uh, and with Strome having a four-point performance as well last night, that now gives him 27 points in his last 31 games. Darn near a point per game player since getting a legitimate opportunity to play on the Blackhawks top line and watching that game last night out of Stroman, you know, looking at his numbers, seeing he has 27 points in 31 games. Now it just makes me scratch my head even more thinking back to the beginning of the season when Jeremy Carlton wouldn't play this guy. Like what are we doing here? Dylan Strom was healthy scratched in five of the Blackhawks' first 10 games this season. And even when he was in the lineup, he was playing, you know, 12, 13 minutes with guys like Philip Kurashev and Henrik Borgstrom, and it, it just didn't make any sense. And knowing what we do now, uh, it's just even more infuriating that that's how Jeremy Colleton chose to handle Dylan Strom. That's how he handled, undoubtedly, the Blackhawks' most productive and best center so far this season. He didn't even want to play him. no. There's no real room for Strom in this lineup. Makes me want to bash my head against a rock. Um, so good to see Strom really making the most of this, making the most of these opportunities. He continues to be red hot. He's got six goals in his last three games now as well. Uh, but what? Ooh, excuse me. Had a hiccup there for a second. That'll happen. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about mostly involving Strom is whether or not his recent performances, not just his game last night, obviously, you know, that's going to uh, cause some recency bias in the minds of Blackhawks fans, but just whether or not his performance over the last couple of months should change the mindset of the Blackhawks front office about what to do with him as we approach the trade deadline. Because look, I don't know if Dylan Strome is a top line center on a Stanley Cup contender. He's probably not, to be honest. But he's been the best down the middle for the Blackhawks undoubtedly this season. And while he is 25 years old and heading into a rebuild three to five or potentially more years down the road, Dylan Strome could be 30 years old at that point. Is he still going to be playing at this type of caliber when he's 35 years down the road. No one knows that for sure, uh, but it does bring up some questions. What, what I do think the Blackhawks need to be wary of though, is um, how much his trade value is going to go up based on his recent performances. I don't even know that it did for sure, but I'm assuming with Strom having 27 points in his last 31 games, some other NHL teams are going to take notice of that, and they're going to probably have a little more interest than they did a few months ago when, according to reports, the Blackhawks weren't really getting any attention uh, on Dylan Strom while they were shopping him. So I personally, this is another really tough decision that Kyle Davidson is going to have to make. I personally think that the Blackhawks, unless the offer is spectacular, which they're not going to get a first round pick for Dylan Strome. That's not going to happen. If they can get a high round second, they can get a high second round pick. That would be tough for me to say no to at this point. I love Dylan Strome. Don't get me wrong. He's been incredible. I was one of the people back in October, November, and December screeching to the heavens to give Dylan Strome an opportunity. We know he can make things work when playing with DeBrinket and Kane. I was one of those people. I'm a fan of Dylan Strome. But considering the state of the Blackhawks right now, is he going to be a top-line center five years down the road? Probably not, right? And if he slots a little bit further down the lineup, is he a good enough complementary piece where he could be a good second or third liner? That 
I don't know because as I just talked about, when Dylan Strom was bumped down in the lineup earlier this year, yeah, he wasn't surrounded by the best talent, but he also didn't really drive play at all himself. And I think that's really due to the lack of speed that he has. He's never been um, a strong skater. That's never been the strength of his game. So because of that, slotting him down the lineup in the future, is he someone that's still going to be able to produce and create consistently? I have my concerns. So if the Blackhawks can get a high second round pick for Dylan Strom at the deadline, I think Kyle Davidson might have to take it. But I will say if he's not getting the offers he wants at this point, I don't think there's any need to be shoving Dylan Strom out the door. He's been spectacular. He's shown potential. Let's see a little bit more of that, right? If the offer isn't good enough, why not let Strom continue on serving as serving in a top line role for the remainder of the season, get a little bit of a larger sample size to evaluate how he's performing. And then you can kind of base your decision on, um, I believe if they don't trade him at the deadline, I do believe the Blackhawks are, are going to want to bring him back maybe on a one-year deal again to kind of expand that sample size a little bit and get a better estimate of what we have here right because we've seen Dylan Strom go through these spurts in the past when he first came here in Chicago I believe he had 51 points in 57 games the last two years have been terrible but here he is once again near a point per game player when getting an opportunity with DeBrinket and Kane so I think if the offer's not good enough you just let him keep on keeping on maybe give him a one-year extension and then kind of evaluate him from there I wouldn't be rushing Dylan Strom out the door, and I don't think the Blackhawks are. I think that's the right way to go about it. Um, But I am interested to see uh, or hear any rumors about what Dylan Strom's trade value could be at this point. I was thinking, you know, back in October and November, it was probably a fourth-round pick, to be honest. But now he could be pushing back into that second-round pick territory. So uh, I'm curious to hear some reports on Strom in the next couple of days, I'm sure. We'll hear about uh, hear about that on him and a few other Blackhawks as well. Uh, but just great to see Dylan Strom continuing to make the most of these opportunities. He undoubtedly deserves all the success as of late. Um, and just a fun game from the Blackhawks last night after a dominant, perform- dominant performance from their top line. They were on the ice for five goals, four to one against. I think they led 13 to seven in scoring chances. I mean, they were just clicking last night and it was Absolutely beautiful to watch. And even aside from the top line, um, the Blackhawks, they had six guys score a goal last night. I mean, I don't remember the last time that's happened. Uh, and, And also 10 players total wound up on the stat sheet. We saw Jake McCabe chip in for two nice assists as well. Brandon Hagel had a goal and an assist. He had a highlight reel goal going backhand, forehand, backhand to make it six to nothing early on in the second period. Uh, Both Jones brothers, added an assist. Uh, So just a really strong offensive performance out of the Chicago Blackhawks last night, a super fun game to watch leading to an eight, three victory after a dominant performance by the offense and mostly the top line of DeBrinckit, Stroman Kane. All right. There's some thoughts on Dylan Strom's hat trick, Patrick Kane's six point night and the Blackhawks besting the ducks eight to three coming up in just a moment. I am going to get into Norm McIver reportedly being named the associate general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks. But first I need to talk to you all about built bar, which is a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar built bar. Oh, it's the new year. Excuse me. It's the new year. And that means New Year's resolutions. And if yours is about getting fit or even eating healthier, then make sure to include Built Bar in your plan because right now you can get the best of both worlds with Built Bar. Delicious and healthy. In so many flavors, you'll have a hard time choosing which one you want. Are you going to go with raspberry or mint brownie? Cookies and cream or peanut butter brownie? Coconut almond or double chocolate? Either way that you choose, Built Bar is going to make it easier to stick to your resolution because they taste so good, you'll actually want to eat them, unlike some other protein bars, which can be chalky, dry, waxy, or even kind of just taste like a chemical spill. And even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is also good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious Built Bar, you can almost count it as a workout. And for a limited time offer, go to BuiltBar.com right now and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's BuiltBar.com with the promo code 
LOCKED15, one word in all caps, followed by the number 15 to get 15% off your next Built Bar order. All right, we're back here on Locked On Blackhawks. Moving on into segment two today, I also wanted to be sure to get into the report that Norm McIver, who was a longtime front office member for the Blackhawks before departing to Seattle in January of 2021, Norm McIver is apparently reuniting with the Blackhawks organization. Norm is having a reunion with the front offices. He has officially been named the associate general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks, according to uh, Elliot Friedman in his 32 co- thoughts column late last night. Uh, and earlier this morning as well, Frank Saravalli jumped on the topic and added that McIver is expected to serve as the associate GM for the Blackhawks under Davidson and will oversee all scouting operations and will also play a major role in finding the next head coach for the team once the regular season is over. And for the past few weeks now, uh, McIver's name has been thrown around a bunch, has been linked to the Chicago Blackhawks uh, really ever since Kyle Davidson was uh, named the permanent GM earlier last week because uh, there are rumors swirling that uh, those two got pretty close with one another uh, while McIver uh, was here and, and while Davidson was uh, working his way through the ranks. So we've heard about the possibility of McIver rejoining the Blackhawks front office for a, a week or so now. Um, and here it is. I mean, McIver, it didn't take all that long for um, Kyle to bring back his good buddy, Norm, another big move by Kyle, by the way, he's made a couple here in his first, what, nine days as GM uh, bringing back, McIver and also letting go both uh, associate or assistant GM Ryan Stewart, I should say, and uh, director of scouting um, Mark Kelly. Uh, And by the way, just a little more background information on McIver for all of you. Uh, He was with the Blackhawks organization for all three Stanley Cups that they've achieved in the past uh, 13 seasons. Um, for eight years under Stan Bowman, he served as the uh, assistant general manager from 2012 to 2019. And then uh, he was actually demoted to the v- uh, the VP of player personnel back in 2019, which most people believe is what led to McIver departing for Seattle. Uh, sounds like he probably wasn't all that happy with the decision that Stan Bowman made. And hey, Join the club, buddy. Back of the bu- back of the bus. Um, but for those wondering, you know, kind of about um, McIver's, you know, being a, a Stan Bowman guy, if you will, since he was here from 2012 to 2019 under Bowman, he served as the AGM with Bowman. Um, it, it really doesn't sound though like he he was all that close with him, right? And also, as for McIver's involvement in the um, 2000, oh, excuse me, in the 2010 Kyle Beach scandal. Uh, at the time of that, McIver was only serving as the director of player development. He really didn't have a major front office role until 2012. And also, his name was not mentioned one time in the 107 page Block and Jenner report that was released to the public. So, doesn't sound like um, Norm was really involved in this situation. Uh, Whether he knew about this or not, um, we'll never know for sure. Um, But I did just want to point that out, that he wasn't named in the lawsuit and doesn't really seem to have any ties to Stan Bowman. Uh, But for the Blackhawks, this is an interesting move for sure. And I I don't really know what to make of it yet, to be honest. Um, And I'm really curious how all of you fans feel about it as well. So uh, definitely go and comment down below how you feel about Norrick Iver rejoining the Blackhawks organization. And also go comment below. I forgot to mention this earlier. Go comment below on whether or not you think the Blackhawks should trade Dylan Strome. Should they keep him? And please tell me why. Let me know why you feel that way. Give me some context. I want to know how the fan base feels as a whole. So go comment down below both on how you feel about McIver coming back and also what you want the Blackhawks to do with Dylan Strome and why. Uh, But I'm sure not a lot of people out there uh, really know much about Norm McIver, and I really didn't either until I I did some more research on him. Um, But the fact that, you know, he was here for the previous 
10 seasons, give or take after having a, or before having a cup of coffee in Seattle. Um, I don't know. It, it just, it's weird, right? Um, it, it just doesn't sound like a move where we're truly thinking about the, about the future and moving forward. You know, it, it would be nice to just see some different faces in the front office for the hack for the next handful of years, whether or not, um, McIver was a Bowman guy. It's just a, a weird move in a time when the Blackhawks are trying to change so many things up to go and bring McIver back. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to feel about it yet. But one thing I do want to mention is I don't think Kyle Davidson would be bringing back Norm if A, if he if he wasn't a good person, you know, um, who, who does not truly want to be a part of this change in the culture and the front office and everything that involves the Chicago Blackhawks. I don't think um, – Kyle would bring him back in this particular scenario if he wasn't confident about how he is as a human being. And also B, it tells me that uh, Davidson really does trust McIver's knowledge on both scouting and just from an organizational perspective. Um, And we've heard Davidson, of course, uh, I just mentioned uh, McIver is going to be uh, overseeing all scouting operations for the Blackhawks. And we've heard Davidson say that he's going to be heavily involved in the scouting process as well. This area in particular, Davidson really sounds like he's going to be diving in deep. Um, so by bringing back McIver in that role in particular, uh, that tells me that Davidson trusts his eye, both with the prospects and also with figuring out who is going to be the right person uh, to be the next head coach of the Blackhawks throughout this rebuilding process. All right, there are my quick thoughts on Norm McIver reportedly reuniting with the Chicago Blackhawks front office. Coming up in just a minute, I am going to dive into the research on Minnesota Wild prospect Jack McBain, who the Hawks are reportedly showing interest in, with McBain not expected to sign an entry-level contract with Minnesota. Welcome back to Locked On Blackhawks. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Getting into segment three now on the show today before I let you all go. First, I got to say, happy 24th birthday to Riley Stillman. Happy birthday, Riley. We appreciate you and all your hard work. Big, rugged, defensive defenseman for the Chicago Blackhawks. Unfortunately, he was not in the lineup last night. Alec Regula was actually recalled from the Rockford Icehawks and jumped into the lineup over both Gustafson and Stillman, Uh, but hopefully as a little bit of a birthday present, Stillman will be back in the lineup tomorrow night when the Blackhawks go up to Boston and take on the pesky Bruins. But one more time, happy 24th birthday to Blackhawks defenseman Riley Stillman. But moving on into segment three now, I also wanted to be sure to get into the rumor from Minnesota Wild beat writer Michael Russo yesterday which stated that the Blackhawks are among many teams right now who are currently interested in prospect Jack McBain, who was a former third round pick of the wild back in 2018. He went 63rd overall, but is not expected to sign his entry level contract with the wild. Once he finishes his senior season at Boston college. And by the way, uh, there's probably only going to be one game left in Boston College's season. They've reached their conference tournament, so uh, that's probably going to be happening rather soon. Uh, And also, if McBain does not sign with the Wild before the NHL trade deadline, which again is on March 21st, coming up here uh, in just 12 days, if he doesn't sign with the Wild before then, then he'd become an unrestricted free agent later on in August. And the Wild likely are not wanting to go that route, uh, not wanting to let him go for free when there are reported to be uh, over a dozen teams interested, including our Chicago Blackhawks. But taking a quick look at McBain's game so far this season in 22 games for the Boston College Golden Eagles, McBain has recorded 18 goals and 11 assists for 29 points. So 29 points in 22 games, uh, 18 of those have come via goals. So a, a big time goal scorer this season and well over a point per game player for Boston College, a great offensive impact so far. And also taking a look at his numbers from the past couple of seasons as a junior last year. In the COVID-shortened season, uh, McBain tallied six goals and 
13 assists for 19 points in 24 games. So um, he was a point per game player last season or close to a point per game player, I should see. But we've seen a massive leap in the goal scoring department so far this year, going from six goals in 24 games last year to 18 in 22 this year. Uh, and even as a sophomore for Boston College, uh, McBain impressively had six goals and 15 assists for 21 points in 34 games when he was just 20 years old. So uh, he's been a big part of Boston College's offense for the last few years now. And with that offensive skill set, I wouldn't say it's anything uh, too special, probably at bottom six potential in the future uh, with a strong shot that he possesses. But Combine that with McBain's six foot four, 210 pound frame. He's a big boy. So that could certainly be an intriguing combination for the Blackhawks to consider. And when doing a little bit more digging on McBain, I saw the initial report, didn't really know all that much about him, went and read a couple articles, looked at his numbers. And I also wanted to go and check out his profile on Dauber Prospects, which is a really phenomenal website for all prospects at, in any different league. Um, but according to Dover prospects, McBain is quote, a strong power center. Who's got good vision, a strong shot and good high end speed, but needs to work on his acceleration and overall consistency. So for being six foot four, 210 pounds, you love to hear that the speed on McBain is good. That's amazing to hear, but it sounds like getting up to top speed quickly seems to be a bit of an issue. And I think the Blackhawks, if general manager Kyle Davidson and that new scouting department, Norm McIver, if they feel like McBain, uh, if they can, if they feel like McBain can figure out that part of his game, if he can get to top speed faster and work on his acceleration, then I think, um, the Blackhawks have to have a little interest, right? Because you see the size. He undoubtedly has the size to be in the NHL. 6'4", 210 at his age already. I mean, come on. Uh, along with a decent offensive skill set, again, he probably more projects as a bottom six forward. Um, but if he can figure out that speed of the NHL game, then I think the Blackhawks really should be interested here because uh, I've talked about it for far too long. The Blackhawks simply don't have enough players with both size and speed someone who can go into the offensive zone win a puck battle after it was dumped in and, and go and make things happen that's one of the reasons why I, I like Sam Lafferty so much right now because uh he's one of the few if not the only guy on this Blackhawks team uh who provides them with that on a nightly basis the only issue I have with the McBain situation here I, I like what I hear about this kid obviously the acceleration is a bit of an issue but uh the bigger problem I think here with McBain is that the wild are reportedly wanting a second round pick in exchange. And with McBain already being 22 years old, I just don't know if he possesses a high enough ceiling to be worth that kind of asking price, especially when the Blackhawks need to be hitting on these second round picks in the future uh, because of this rebuild, you know, Kyle Davidson, I feel like with the second round picks that he has, uh, he's probably hoping that the players that he selects are going to have higher ceilings than McBain does. So uh, if that's the asking price, a second round pick for McBain, if that's what the wild want in return, I personally would not be interested in that. Um, however, if the wild would be willing to bump that down to a third round pick, the Hawks do have three of those at the moment for this upcoming NHL draft. Uh, if the wild would be interested in doing maybe a combination of a third round pick and uh, maybe Henrik Borgstrom, I was going to say Calvin DeHaan, but that's too sweet of a pot. DeHaan and a third for Jack McBain. That would be a disservice by the Blackhawks. Um, probably a third and, you know, Henrik Borgstrom or Ryan Carpenter. I know it's not great, um, but the Wild are apparently wanting a rental player for their postseason push. So uh, those two, Borgstrom and Carpenter, kind of fit into that category and could be a complementary piece to a trade. I'm not really sure if... if Davidson or the Hawks would be willing to go that route if they want to give up one of those third round picks that they have at the moment. Uh, but I don't think, you know, just a second is worth taking a chance on uh, a 22 year old in McBain who hasn't really flashed the highest NHL potential so far in his time with Boston college.
All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Wednesday, March 9th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now on your favorite podcast app and you can get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, be sure to go and check out Lockdown Fantasy Hockey as hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms, so be sure to check out Lockdown Fantasy Hockey right now wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the show or to the Blackhawks, feel free to email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me on any one of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708-653-0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for tuning in to Locked On Blackhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.